Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this first impressions, kind of. I've already looked at these cards, but I haven't spent any time with them yet. Um, Walkthrough of the When My Soul Whispered Oracle deck. I'm really, really excited about this one. This was one of the last Kickstarters I backed, I believe. I think there was one other maybe after this one um, in, I think, 2019. Yeah, it was 2019. So this is an Oracle deck. Look at this box, first of all. I'm actually really excited to be getting a chance to film some walkthroughs. This is written and created by Melissa Salvaggio, and the artwork is by Jess O'Connor. So it says, the when my, when my Soul Whispered Oracle deck contains 44 cards illustrated with ink and watercolor. Each card has been designed with minimal imagery, focusing on only one or two central uh, colors per card. The idea is that the simple illustrations will serve as a starting point for you to discern or discover rather the meaning behind the images without being distracted by excessive imagery. Um, I like excessive imagery, actually, but there was a few cards here that just hit me so hard that I was like, I need, I need this in my life. And check out, look at this bright tangerine orange um, as a contrast. And this is my favorite kind of box, this sort of wraparound box. Now I can tell you that, let's see, I'm going to grab my Rider Waite Smith so I can show you a size comparison. So here is my Centennial. And I'll just show you how these compare. I think this is a bridge sized deck. When you open it up, the box inside says, here and now I vow to love everything that I am and everything that I am to become. MS for Melissa Salvaggio. That is such a pretty sentiment, but I love the color of the box. I think that's so great. And I absolutely love this B image. So that is the box. Size wise, let's put that there. Size-wise, you can see it is, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's like a bridge size deck. So it's definitely shorter and narrower than a standard tarot card, which I am good with, especially for Oracle decks. They are gilded, and it, feel, it seems like it's kind of a really yellowy gold, but it's got that sort of matte gold almost finish to it. It does have ever so slight amount of reflect or shine to it, but it's not that really mirror-y finish that's like uncomfortable to touch. And I was very excited to discover that these are rose petal finish. Oh, they're so beautiful. The backings I think are really, really gorgeous. And these oranges and yellows just remind me of sort of the solar plexus and sacral chakra. There is some chakra energy through these cards for sure, which we will talk about a little bit. And you can definitely use the colors, I think, as well as to clue in a bit to what chakras are present. I don't know if that's always the case. I've only done, like I said, a quick flip through so far, but we're gonna take a look at these card by card. But first, just a quick note, there wasn't a um, guidebook of any kind inside of the box. There is, though, a business card that tells you how you can get a hold of the guidebook at whenmysoulwhisper.com. And that little mantra, here and now, I vow to love everything that I am and everything that I'm to become, is also on the business card. I just love this artwork. And there's actually a spot gloss on the business card, even. There you go. So you can kind of see. It's a really nice, and it's raised up. It's a These are really nice cards, actually. Very, very well done. Um, and I have gone to the website and downloaded the... Uh, the ebook and actually sent it to my Kindle. So let me actually grab my Kindle so I can show it to you. So I'm probably too lazy to edit out the little pause while I'm grabbing things and I apologize but there are several uh, little videos that I want to be able to make today so I'm going to try to just jump right in and get into stuff. But I'm going to show you card by card. We'll look at the guidebook at the end because I want to give it a chance to sort of get loaded and we're not going to spend that much time doing that here or at this point. But I also want to show, I don't remember backing this deck at a level that came with a reading cloth. Now I don't usually uh, back bundles that have reading cloths because I have Peggy and she spoils me with really, really lovely reading cloths. But I'm guessing this one was some kind of a stretch goal. I'm very fidgety. I'm just like rearranging myself. Okay, sorry, that's probably really annoying. Here we go. So I'm gonna move one of my flames here so that I don't, but it looks to be like a really nice design and I can't open it up all the way without getting in my flames. But you can see there's like a white sort of sep 
uh, septogram, <laughs> like six septogram. Somebody into geometry is probably gonna correct me. And there's these really cute little bees in the fabric too, but this is a, it feels like a linen or cotton kind of um, cloth. It's just been surged at the edges. And what I love about this is that there's enough space around the edges that I should be able to ask Peggy very nicely to back this onto a different fabric for me so that it's got some weight to it. And it feels like it'll iron up okay, so super cute. And I just love the white space in the center. So that was a fun thing to find in there because again, I, I don't remember, I could be wrong, but I don't remember backing at a level that would come with a cloth. So if that was a stretch goal, it's a really quite a nice one. I much prefer these more cottony feeling um, spread cloths to the satiny ones because the satiny ones often are so thin and sort of flimsy feeling and they can be difficult to back, which I really like to be able to do. So that was a really, really nice touch. Here, I can put my flame back now. So we're gonna zoom into the cards and take a closer look. Let's see where we end up here with the zoom. Oh, there we go, not bad, alrighty. I might be able to bring us a little more head on. There we go. Oh, did you see that? Is there like a little fly or something? <laughs> that was really funny. Anyway, here we have our first card, which is abundance, and we have the goldfish. Fish is a great symbol for abundance. It's a traditional symbol for abundance, and I think it really, really works here. Next, we have acceptance, and I'm not, oh, there it is again. Well, what is that? Oh, you guys, oh my God. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, please focus. I'm gonna try to zoom us so you can see this. There is a tiny, tiny little ladybug. Do you see that? crawling on this oracle deck if that isn't like a good oh, oh no come back oh my god you guys you'll probably see why this excites me but oh come on focus i know you can do it no do you see it do you see it oh my gosh you guys that is like the best sign to me now my window's open but i have a screen so i don't usually get and i'm on the third floor Pretty sure that's a ladybug. I mean, it could be a different kind of bug. <gasps> no, it's a ladybug, I just saw its wings open. Oh my God. Okay, I, I can't focus now, you guys. I'm keeping this in the video. Okay, well, I'm gonna let that little guy do what it's gonna do. It's just off camera now, <laughs> but that was really cool. Okay, so anyway, um, I don't know what kind of flower this is. That's what I was gonna say, but the keyword here is acceptance. I think that's a great expansive keyword. That little ladybug is crawling all over my reading table and I am living for it. <laughs> so here we have advocate or advocate, depending on how you read that. I love the really soft color palette, the flowers. I love this rose petal finish. Here's our bee for balance. Belong, and this looks like, oh, I'm so bad with birds, but I think it's a chickadee. Shayla. Shh, no. My doggo is like, what am I hearing? Uh, that is really, really cute. I, I want to say it's like a chickadee. Sheila. This is going to be one of those videos where like just nothing is according to plan. I just flipped over the card. I'm so distracted by the ladybug on my reading table. You just don't know. All right. So boundaries. Hummingbirds are very protective of their territory, which I've learned through working with different animal decks. So that's really great for the boundaries card. For the moon, we have clarity. I love this. And it's so funny because Sometimes in decks, that watercolor outside the lines thing just drives me a little nuts. Here, I just think it's so beautiful. And I could not tell you what the difference is between the ones that I tend to like that do this and the ones that I don't tend to like that do this. Family's doing laundry. Sorry about that, guys. Communicate. We have elephant. And confidence. Oh, before, real quick. Um, I love big ears. Uh, communication cards. I love that that cues you to think about listening. Sorry, I just had to say that before I got for forgot. Confidence with the sunflower is so good. Connected. We have this tree. These are just beautiful. I think these would work beside a lot of different decks. Decision. Desire. The moth to the flame. So perfect. Determination. We have our fox. These angel wings and halo for divinity. 
Oh, I'm so bad with flowers. It's not, it's like a hyacinth. I'm so bad, but emotion. The turtle for empathy. I think that's really interesting because I definitely think of sort of the intuitive, empathic people in my life as being fairly introverted as well. But I'm sure there may be another connection besides that, but that's what pops into my mind. Expectation, and we have the lioness. Forgiveness. This reminds me a little bit of funeral flowers, which I think is really, really interesting. I don't know that that was the intention, but this reminds me of the kind of wreath, flower wreath, you might see at a funeral, um, which is really interesting with that keyword. Grounded, and we have this like fierce dragon. And we definitely have some root chakra colors going on there. The rose for healing. The, pe oh, the peacock feather for insight. For journey, we have the Ouroboros. If I go by colors here for chakra, this would be heart and third eye, which is interesting. Joy, the sun. Kindness, we have this polar bear. I love, of course, now I have a thing. If you've watched my channel for a bit, you might know this. Um, the two sort of animal or natural kingdom creature energies that I work with the most is unicorn and ladybug. And I recognize that unicorn is mythological and ladybugs are insects, but there's something about that. So any animal deck that has unicorns and ladybugs tends to win me over. There is both in this deck, but I love this keyword for unicorn. It's pretty spectacular um, as a keyword for unicorn in this deck. So that was one of the two cards, obviously, that won me over. Well, there's more than two, but this card also, I love this, the seashell uh, at the ocean for listen is so perfect because this talks about, at least to me, it intuitively speaks about listening not only to like inner truth and to other people, but also to spirit. And now my dog is like nesting in my bed. <laughs> it's just been one of those videos. Motivate. Love this. A star and the, this makes me think of daydreaming and goals. Now, and we have the peacock in all of its splendor here. He is beautiful. Receptivity, we have the grasshopper. This is interesting. Again, the color choices here, we have sacral and um, solar plexus chakra. More sacral than solar plexus in strength, I think. Just going by colors again, just playing around. I Like I said, I haven't really worked with this yet. I just got it. But I love the idea that it could work with the um, chakra colors. And in fact, I don't have it, but this deck might go really good with, um, oh, that little tinned deck. Oh, it's it's really beautiful and I don't have it. And it's in a tin and it's got um, otters and, oh my gosh, I was going to make a point and I can't even remember the deck I was going to talk about. Somebody's going to probably be yelling at the screen, but it's, it's chakra based, but it's very pippish, super cute, kind of got it kind of soft on my wish list. Okay, I'm going to give up for now. Somebody's going to comment, leave it in the comments, I'm quite sure. So check the comments if you're being annoyed with me right now, like what deck is she talking about? Somebody will mention it, I'm sure. So transcend, we have the dream catcher. Transformation, we have the butterfly. I love, love, love the swan for unconditional. And I like that it doesn't say unconditional love. It's implied, sure, with the colors and the, the choice of swan here, but it's not necessarily referring to love. It could. I like the single keywords. That was one of the things that seemed to be important to the creators as well, was just a single keyword. Understanding, and we have the bluebells. Look, there's a flower I recognize. Vibration, and we have the Eye of hum Hamsa, I believe is how you say it here. Wisdom for the Owl just works so well. There it is, and this was, this was the card that was my tipping point, and I think it's so incredibly beautiful that a little ladybug visited us for this walkthrough because this keyword with this ladybug is literally everything to me. So I've shown it, I have a scratch on my arm, but I've shown my little ladybug friend here um, in my tattoo, I'm sure on my channel before, but this is a very meaningful symbol for me because for me it represents the inner child and that sort of softest, most vulnerable part of me that is just as worthy as the rest. And um, so this just, this captured my heart in such an important way. Um, yeah, this is this deck, just for that reason, will probably be one I reach for really frequently. 
it just means a lot to me. So this last little bit of cards are chakra cards, but they're not calling themselves chakra cards. I do think they're brilliant, brilliant chakra cards. So this first one, Microcosm, is absolutely brilliant for the root chakra. When we think about the root chakra, think about the, the sort of day-to-day -day mundane material realities of our life, which really is our personal microcosm. Passion for the sacral chakra is really perfect. Pa the sacral chakra is where a lot of our like emotions and like our the heat and the and again passion <laughs> live, right? So that's just perfect for that chakra. Manifest for the solar plexus is again perfect. I don't have any complaints about this. I mean, this the solar plexus, that space just below your rib cage, that that spot right there is where a lot of our like core drive comes from. It's it's our ch personal chariot energy, right? Love for the heart chakra. No complaints. Oops. Truth. Oops. It came off off of a uh, frame there. Truth for the throat chakra. Intuition for the third eye chakra. And finally, macrocosm for the crown. And I think this is, a, again, the, the whole use of microcosm for the root, macrocosm for the crown, I think is really, really brilliant because one of the chakras that I think is hard for a lot of people to connect to is the crown. We understand third eye is wisdom and intuition and sort of connecting with that, um, that deep inner knowing. But the crown is more about connection to universe, connection to spirit, connection to all. And that can be a harder concept to sort of wrap your head around. It's why it's the seventh chakra, the, the most ethereal of all of them. And so this terminology, when we think of microcosm as the, the, the root chakra and where everything is grounded and, and sure, and then macrocosm where things are a little bit more ethereal and difficult um, to wrap your head around, that just makes so much sense to me. So I really love that choice there. All right, I'm gonna zoom us back out. We'll take a look at the guidebook and we will do a random draw together. So I'm gonna pull us out. Perfect. So I'm gonna give these a shuffle. I'm sure they're gonna shuffle beautifully. That rose petal does tend to stick a little. This is a thicker feeling cardstock. It's probably only like a 330. It may be a 350 GSM, but because they're a smaller deck, they do feel a little stiffer. They shuffle just beautifully though. I don't know if you're seeing the gorgeous bridges that I'm getting, but it, um, it's very, very easy. And they're actually sliding together much nicer than some of the bigger um, rose petal finish decks that I've, I've used, where they can tend to get a little sticky. This feels just a little less sticky actually in general. Um, it's still rose petally, but just not as rose petally. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever. All right, let's pull a card and we'll take a look at the guidebook. So, and we've pulled intuition, which is that third eye chakra. So I'm gonna set that aside. We'll take a look at the guidebook and then we'll read this entry specifically. So here is the When My Soul Whispered guidebook. Uh, it is Kindle. And it looks like we have sort of an introduction journey. I don't know what the number is. I don't know if that's meant to be there. Oh, that's the page number, but that must be, those must be blank pages. Now, if this was laid out for like, say, a little white book, that would make sense. So here's, uh, so that initial part was probably like a bit of a letter from the author. We have an intro. Oh, so here we do talk about chakra association. The deck was originally created based loosely on the nine point chakra system with keywords and colors being chosen specifically on this basis. The predominant card colors are used to resonate with the particular chakra listed. That's exciting because I actually did not know that when I first looked at this deck, but I assumed because of the inclusion of the chakra cards that there was that element at play. Um, and I'm glad that my assumption was correct. There is within the guidebook also a reference to, so it sounds like there's going to be keyword, quote, a meaning, a light. So these are keywords about the positive aspects of the card, a shadow, sacred words, so an affirmation, mantra, or chant, and then the chakra association. And it says reason, raison de terre, a oh, reason de terre, which is the French meaning purpose or reason for being. This entry provides a brief explanation for the choice or illustration for each card to provide you with an understanding of the card's role in the deck. Um, use of color. Now it says nine point chakra system. I'm not familiar with nine point chakra. Ah, here we go. The nine point chakra system used in the deck includes seven personal chakras, base, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and crown, which are the ones I'm familiar with, as well as incorporating two transpersonal chakras, earth star and soul star. Now that I'm not familiar with. The colors used for each of the chakras are illustrated on the following page. Now, of course, this is not a color Kindle, so I don't see the colors here. Um, but there are some spreads, and that's kind of fun, and then we get into the cards. So I'm going to just quickly get over to the last page here, let's see if I can quickly browse. 
Come on. I'm not so good with my Kindle. Go to... Aha! End! Because we're going to be near the end here with this intuition card. So I'm going to just page backwards. I'm not... I'm sure there are quicker ways to do this with Kindle, but I am not so good. And this should be it here. Yes, intuition. Okay, so here's what it has to say. You will know the truth by the way it feels. Ooh, that's a good quote for this card. Intuition is seldom wrong. How many times has a situation occurred and you found yourself saying, I knew I shouldn't have done that, and ended up berating yourself for making a less than ideal choice? Instead of listening to the opinions of others, tune in to the voice of your own heart as it speaks to you. Your intuition does not speak through words, but through subtle impressions that leave you with a silent knowing of the right path. Intuition will never force you down one particular road. Rather, it will act as a compass as you navigate the terrain, while at all times you remain at liberty to choose your own road. When presented with different options, ask yourself what feels right. It is likely that one choice will stand out above others. This is your inner compass guiding you towards the best decision for you at this moment. Pay attention to the cues as they come. Do not doubt your intuition as it steers you in the best direction. So in the light, we have keywords of instinct, feeling, awareness, and sense. And in shadow, anxious, doubt, uncertain, and uneasy. And the sacred words, I acknowledge that my inner guidance will not lead me in the wrong direction. And it says third eye here. I'm curious what, um, you know, by the time I navigate the guidebook, but I'm, I'm really going to be excited to dig into this. I think the guidebook is well done. I think it's pretty easy to look at on the Kindle. It'd probably be more colorful, colorful to look at on your phone. But for guidebooks and things like that, I tend to like them being on here. So that was good. So this, you guys, is the When My Soul Whispered Oracle deck. This is out now. Uh, this was a Kickstarter that I backed, but I believe that you can now go to whenmysoulwhispered.com and order this deck for yourself. It fans beautifully despite being a rose petal finish. So again, this is a really nice rose petal, not quite so sticky as some of the other ones have been. So I am really excited to play with this. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on it down below. Let me know what you think, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!